Hey guys, how's everything going? You're listening to Ball as usual. Uh, tonight's game was Combined Army against JSA, and we're playing on uh, the Show of Force mission. Uh, but the special thing about today's game is that um, we were trying to recreate a table that had been suggested to us by um, the Australian guys, particularly Lachlan Carter, also known as The Border, on the forums. And um, if you have a little look at these photos here, let's see if we can um, get a bit of a look-see. Um, this is a table at an Australian tournament, and as you can see, it's all uh, paper terrain, Hephaestus stuff from Corvospelli, so very basic stuff, very little scatter terrain. When I when I first saw these photos, I thought, wow, this looks really sparse. It looks like there's barely anything there, but the, the photos always uh, can be deceiving. Once you actually get down to table level and you actually look around to see uh, what's visible, um, the, the fire lanes aren't that bad at all, and there are actually plenty of places to hide models in deployment. So um, for tonight's game, what I actually did is I got together with Garth and we actually tried to recreate tables that looked exactly like this one. So let's see how well we did. By the way, on this thread, you can look at it online. Um, I might even post the link. Uh, it's on the forums. It's called uh, Warbands. Um, what's it called? Warband Stat Lines. So if we come down here. Um, so this is the table from the side, uh, again here. So what I want you to do, guys, if you're interested, is actually go to the, um, the thread and look at these photos yourself. And then let's look at the photos that I took of my game. So let's go into it. Um, here's the first photo. Um, just tried to replicate exactly um, the, the table. You can sort of see that some of the buildings are a bit different. Um, but there's this one deployment zone. Uh, we actually shifted things a little bit and we tried to use more paper terrain in the deployment zones um, to, to replicate their deployment zones a bit more accurately, but we've changed the middle of the table a bit more. Again, from the side, you can sort of see what it look like, look, looks like here. You can always pause the video if you want to uh, take a closer look. Um, again, from um, the, uh, the deployment zone that I was using right here. So you've got this middle spot here. In fact, I'm just going to get out the draw tool. So uh, you can easily deploy troops behind here because the, the, the deployment zone comes through to about this spot here. So if you want to put warbands and remotes behind this spot, it's easy. You, you've got this spot right here um, behind the building here and behind this spot here. Um, all right. Going away from this, there's a top-down view. So you can see that there are actually some pretty big fire lanes as well. Um, specifically, uh, this lane along here, big long fire lane. There's also a fairly long lane through this gap here. Obviously, the the, um, the color that I'm drawing is, is a long line. Um, and there's a bit through here as well. Um, but the good thing is that um, the, the deployment zones aren't uh, huge sniper towers like I thought they were. This particular piece of terrain was one piece of terrain which we both decided, well, uh, we want the deployment zone to be along here. If I draw a dotted line through the middle, so if you want to, you can deploy uh, a model on top of the building here, but it may not get cover from um, an angle across here. So if, if you are attacking from this deployment zone to this spot and taking first turn, you might be able to shoot this guy here until he moves into this spot here. So hopefully that makes sense. So I actually really like this table after we did the setup. What I'm going to do now is try to roll a video that we took of the game and hopefully I've managed to get the, the desktop audio working this time. So let's just check it out. Is it, is it on? Alright. Cool. Okay. So what we've done with this table is we've had a look at the photos that Deborda posted on the forums, uh, the Australian tournament, Sith. I think it was called Sith. Um, and we've tried to recreate it. So in the deployment zones, we've got the cardboard terrain that you get from Corvus Belly, but I haven't got enough cardboard terrain to make the whole table, so I've substituted with some of the Bandua stuff, which you can see with the yellow roofs. Um, I think I've, I've pretty much got it uh, pretty loyal. This bit in the middle, there's a bit of an alcove in there in their photo, but it's not quite shaped like that. We're playing um, the mission show of force, so the tags will actually have to, or anybody will have to control that at the end of the game. Then we've got the panoplies here and here. We've kept this block of terrain fairly loyal uh, with what they've gone with, but notice the panoplies at the top. That's fine, you can still infiltrate up there or have a, uh, a guy just go for that panoply instead. Um, my HPT is around the side, so I'm playing Combined Army Vanilla. Um, this is a very warband heavy list. I've sort of copped out a little bit by taking three Datcharats over four printers. So I was going to go for four Datcharats, but there is a crack on as well. So on this side, we've got two Dats uh, plus the printers. Idea is to just get the smoke on this area here before they roll around the corner. I'm going first for this game. We've got a mysterious TO camera marker represented by that token there. 
Um, the uh, the Snape Palbot here is uh, hooked up to the Doctor Worm, as is obvious. That's actually an R drone, just the Flash Pulse bot, not the um, the, the sensor bot. Mark reps uh, prone on the roof. I've converted this overdrone to be like um, a heavy rocket launcher, but it's it's playing as the HRMC, the Hyper rap, uh, Rapid Magnetic <laughs> Cannon. And don't forget these two little guys, just representing the ten bots for Albedo and Deflector. Then you've got the rest of the warbands back through here. There's a couple of Ikadrons hiding around the back. This model, which is uh, Miranda Ashcroft, is actually just a normal uh, specialist Nexus, right? So we know that's the lieutenant because it's the only lieutenant option on the table. Unless, of course, it's this blue marker over here, which it could be. All right, I'm just going to get the camera off our buddy here, and uh, we're going to come around the other side of the table, and we'll talk about what what you've got. So this is this is JSA. We've got a pretty small list, and let's talk us through it right to left. So yep, pretty small JSA list. Starting off with our assault hacker Arigoto. Yep. Yo Jimbo with his little koalas to kind of get a bit of backup, charge up when there's an opportunity. Got a warcore hiding on the. Yeah, it's prone. Prone on the crate just to try and get some opportunity arrows. You got a Chai remote, so it's a repeater. Oh, yeah. Sniffers. The flash boss button. Uh, here's the bulk of the army. We've got a five man Haramaki link team led by Neko Yama. Yep. And our Oyoroi. I see this, the this guy over here is the link leader at the moment. Is that just a Haramaki? Uh, central. Haramaki link leader, yep. just normal Haramaki. They've both got the cheapest loadouts, for about 22 points. Cool. Dirt cheap, heavy infantry. And then we've got our little repeater remote. All right. The Weebling holding the left flank. All Very good. Himself. So would you like to spin a command token to start us off? Oh, hitting the recycling <laughs> bin. Do you want to spin a command token to start us off? I've got 10 regular orders in group one and four regular orders in group two plus four irregular orders in group two. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's take let's take one. Okay. From group one, which I'm assuming has the overdrive. It does. All right, guys. So that was um, hopefully a bit of an overview of the deployment. So I guess the pictures that I've actually taken on my excuse me, the pictures I've taken my deployment zones won't be as, as relevant. We'll still go through them. I just want to point out that um, for this game, we decided not to excuse me, we decided not to uh, roll for lieutenants. We just had a pleasant talk about it as gentlemen and we decided, well, what uh, kind of game do we want to experiment with here? Are we, are we trying our best to beat each other? Or are we trying to sort of look at what would happen? And I said to Garth, hey, um, if I win the roll, I'm going to take first turn because um, I'm going to see if I can get uh, the strategy done where I use my attack pieces like the Overdrawn, like the Knock to Fire, the Mark Rep maybe to kill whatever he has as arrow pieces and then sweep forward with my seven warbands. Um, Garth said to me that if he won, um, he'd probably pick Tableside just because he really preferred the better deployment zone because he wanted to be able to defend against the warbands better. So there is that. In hindsight, um, after actually playing this game, um, because of the mission, which is show of force, um, it really would have been, been better just to try and um, pick up second turn, regardless of table side for me. Um, if Garth had done that, though, if my opponent had done, um, had, had actually gone straight for second turn, that would have allowed me to pick a better table side and see where he's deployed and then move out and, and hopefully crush him that way. So I think that probably would have benefited me um, if, I'd, if we'd done the, the, the lieutenant role. Um, so you, you can sort of see pictures of where is where he's laid out. So here we go. So we're starting the game now. Impetuous goes first. He's got a he's got a uh, war core to the left of, of where the photo is situated, but the um, the the Dacher arts are positioned well enough that they don't come around the corner. They can land, then land the smoke grenades, and the predators can go go through under the cover of smoke, no problem. So here's the position after impetuous movement on the right hand side as well. Um, he's actually got no arrows on the right hand flank here for combined armies, so the predators don't even need that this the smoke to help them out. Just moving forward, there's no ninja snipers or anything to worry about. So uh, the first play of the game, really the first serious play, is for me to move out with my Noctifier Spitfire. Now uh, I normally run the Noctifier Missile Launcher, but I'm going to have a crack at the Spitfire here because I knew sort of what list I'd be up against. Um, just to be fair about this, uh, before we play this game, I 
did tell my opponent up front, okay, I'm going to be playing Combined Army, I am going to be using an Overdraw, and I am going to be using four Datchrites or three Datchrites in this case, plus four Pretters. And he said to me, okay, Luke, I'm going to use uh, my Haramaki sort of JSA list. So we, we knew what we were up against. So I decided, well, the Noctifier is a bit stat static um, with the Missile Launcher. He's only going to be covering one lane. Let's see if we can beat the Link team with this, the Spitfire. So we had a crack at that. The Spitfire can't take advantage of um, Surprise Shot against uh, uh, the Link teams with six cents. But remember, uh, if it's in the right range band, as in within 24, it's plus three, minus three, so 12s to hit. But the Haramaki is at a static uh, Blister Skill 16, minus three for cover, minus six for TO Camo, uh, so long as it's not further away than 24 inches. So it's 12s against sevens with four dice for the 12s, two dice for the sevens. Now, if he rolls a crit here or somehow beats me, then it's all over for the Noctifier. He's got Dogged, so he might be able to keep shooting if he passes a couple of armor saves, but it's still not looking good. Um, so we're not expecting a crit, though. There's only, there's only got two dice, and in this case, what happens is the Noctifier uh, shoots, takes a wound off the Haramaki, and my opponent quite rightly decides to go prone and, uh, and guts out of the way, just allowing me to get free reign of the side of the battlefield. So here he is here, uh, just dropping to the deck, as he should, I think, in this case. So what this allows me to do is, uh, well, I'll, I'll follow up on that flank later, but on this side, we're moving the Overdrawn around here. Um, the Krakot and the Datrats, they don't have to worry about the, the, the walk or because the smoke in the way, but the Overdrawn just pulls slightly out of the smoke and then pulls back around. Um, if we just draw it, um, he's got an opportunity to sort of walk back um, with the first The first short skill is just to go half an inch outside of the smoke then three and a half inches back Shoot the um, the war core destroy it with the HRMC and then move on and that's exactly what's happened what what happens So elsewhere um, the no the the noctifier has now moved to the center of the table and uh, the reason why it's doing this is that um, over here in the photo there's actually another Haramaki missile launcher covering this long fire lane here. So the point is to move the, Haram uh, the Noctifier to the cover here and then move along the, the cube and actually get um, a shot through this angle here and that's exactly what is achieved. So this means another dangerous ARO. You've got a situation where there's the Noctifier, the Haramaki's here, and the dis distance here is about 22 inches, right? So that does mean the same situation. 12's to hit from the four dice, seven's hit to, def to defend. The more face-to-face -face rolls I get engaged with, um, the more likely it is that he'll finally actually get some sort of win on his face-to-face -face roll, and the Noctifier is just gone against the missile launcher. But it didn't happen. I managed to inflict yet another wound, and the um, the Haramaki actually has to guts check back through here. So I've now used my first turn to clear the fire lanes, but the problem with this is that um, his list is quite good at defending. I still can't just shove the Warbrands down his throat because he's got a lot of heavy infantry, high armor, and there are other things that can attack me, like Crazy Koalas, for example. So he's, he's actually got a pretty good list to defend against my kind of list, which I think is quite cool. All right, let's have a look at what else is going on. Um, we now move the um, this this stature outside here is able to pop um, smoke here and he does that successfully although um, after doing that I realized there wasn't too much point to it we can now move the pretters around here and go for the panoplies and try and get some points on the board and we also have a crack -out renegade pulling back behind the the cover here with a double submachine gun So here's the position where the Predator, predator ends up under cover of smoke, but I realized I just didn't quite have enough orders to do what I originally intended to do. I, I was thinking of pulling him um, right through the LOA and actually attacking um, Yujimbo and the uh, Aragoda Hacker, because they are further uh, to, the, to the south here. But the thing is, as soon as the Predator leaves the smoke, he does get hit by the, the Haramaki, and the Noctifier didn't actually kill the Haramaki, only wounded him, and the Haramaki's just pulled back just enough, so he's still getting line of fire through to this particular side of the table, but not having to face the onslaught of the Noctifier anymore. So good move by my opponent. All right, elsewhere on the right-hand flank, um, there's nothing much stopping me, so the Preta moves forward, takes a free combi rifle hit from this uh, sensor remote, and then pulls around here. Um, this Preta is able to detonate the Crazy Koala, which we see up at the top, and, uh, and then obviously moves through and actually eventually murders this guy with his chain rifle. So we'll see that in future photos. This is the final um, ending point of the Preta before it dies. Uh, takes the Crazy Koala, uses the chain rifle, does end up eliminating this uh, Flash Pulse bot. 
Um, okay, so ending my turn, we've still got a, a Datcherite, say, out in the open. The Preta, though, has actually pulled back behind cover, um, pressed the button on the Panoply, and picked up an Adhesive Launcher. So, Ballista Skill 9, not wonderful with a Preta Adhesive Launcher, but if it gets really lucky, that Adhesive Launcher could really just win the game outright against a tag if he gets a lucky crit or something like that. So, uh, JSA first turn, you can see that uh, Yojimbo is sort of coming around the corner here, um, heading towards these guys. He uses his contender to fire at the, the Datcherazza, who's shooting back with a pistol. Um, it's the contender against Mimetism, but my opponent actually does roll well here and destroys the Datcherazza, so that's uh, kind of a pain. Um, you might point out that it's actually better to use a smoke grenade in defense, but the thing is, I didn't want to actually provide my my opponent with smoke cover. The reason why I'm shooting the pistol is that um, I just want to avoid a situation where Yojimbo puts smoke down and just moves through and actually manages to use his entire turn to continue smoke, speculative smoke, until he gets to, to actually attack the Overdrawn, which is possible. I didn't really want Yojimbo to just um, attack the, um, the Overdrawn in close combat, which uh, would have been achievable with, um, you know, some good luck, but risk versus reward, it's, it's definitely probably worth attempting. Alright, so now he's moving out with his uh, this tag, and um, his his plan here is just to pick off a few stragglers. He can't achieve much, and he has to retreat, otherwise the tag's going to be a goner, as you guys might remember from the Wu Ming game uh, that we, we posted recently. So, I'll just move my camera a little bit. The purpose of what he's doing here is just to try and get line of sight to the the Preta. Notice that um, this particular angle is not that great, but... Um, in the in the actual game, what happens here is he's able to move further forward, and then pull back and get um, a better angle past this box to the pressure like this. Right? Notice that the Noctifier is here, but it's gone back into Tio Camo, and it is prone, so it's relatively safe against the JSA forces at this point. Um, the Oyuroi rolls really well and does destroy the Preta, so no adhesive la launcher hitting him at that point, so he's fine. Um, Oyuroi moving a bit closer as you can see here, we, we took a photo um, but then we took back this turn. He thought he might be able to sort of get up on top of the boxes but you can't really end your movement um, you know, in a position where your base can't fit so we decided to retract this, this turn and just pull back over to here where he ends up and um, is trying to pick off the Preter and the, uh, I think the Krakot a Renegade as well. So yeah, what happens is that you've got a situation where the, the tag moved out to a point around about there and is able to just barely pull the line of sight uh, through to the Krakot and nail him as well. So well done. Alright, um, so after that, the tag is moving from this side of the table here all the way around to here and is going to end up the turn in suppression fire. His line of sight facing is looking a bit like this. So he's line of sight along here line of sight along here, so anything that comes around the corner to get him is going to get suppression fired, and anything that comes around here is going to get suppression fired, so it's actually a pretty good spot for him. Uh, Yujimbo is also able to pull back, um, I don't, I think he moved forward originally, then he came back, can't quite remember exactly what happened in that spot. Uh, notice also that we've had, um, although the uh, tag has moved over here, if I get the camera out of the way, um, he's actually spent in order to uh, lock the crazy koala in place, which is pretty cool because if the Noctifier reveals itself, the koala is going to come around here and actually boost around and kill it, right? So that's pretty cool. I quite like that. Um, next up, uh, so you can see the position where the tag's facing. Um, you can see that it has a uh, line of sight sort of past this corner here, but also down this alleyway, but not too far down. If we get out the pen again, um, the tag the idea is to sort of get over to here. There's a mark rep situated here, but my opponent has uh, just explained to me that his intent was to be able to see pass through the ladder, but not to the top of the building where the, the mark rep could just shoot at him. So it's intent-based play, which I'm fine with. We're all good with that in our meta, but he's specifically just gone exactly for this point here where the mark rep would have to come down the stairs before engaging him, which is a smart play. Alright, um, so a bit of a zoom out, um, let's have a look at it. Um, what he's done also is he's stood the Haramaki back up with one wound, he's shifted the Haramaki here slightly with one wound, he's actually stood this model up, so these three models are not prone. But we've got uh, Nico here who is prone and the Link Leader who is prone here. Uh, the tag is in suppression fire. Um, Yojimbo is pulled back behind the cover here of course. We still have um, uh, another robot back here and there's still an Aragoto hacker at the back here. So that's how he's looking. Decent turn one. 
All right, so um, Combined Army turn two, we've got a, another Pretor moving out to replace the one that just died, um, but nothing is available to ARO against it. Um, on the other side of the table, the um, the Datrites are putting down a smoke grenade here so the Pretor can move out in relative safety. Notice that there is a gap between this uh, crate here and the smoke here, and the reason why is that I want to repeat my trick with the Noctifier where um, what we had is a situation at the st in the first turn where it's shooting through at the Haramaki missile launcher, which it wounded, but that missile launcher has stood up again, so I'm going to be wanting to do that. That's why there's a gap between the smoke and the crate. So, um, the Pretor now moving within 8 inches of the Crazy Koala. Crazy Koala boosts around, Pretor dodges, physical 14 pretty good in passing the dodge, so that's one Koala cleared. There it is there, going boom. Um, elsewhere on the table, we've got another Pretor which um, moves out just outside of the smoke here and detonates the other Crazy Koala because it was situated here. The Koala then boosts around to the Pretor who dodges and avoids it. Um, the Pretor, I know that the picture looks like it's not touching the smoke, but I'm actually counting it as touching the smoke because there's um, some Haramaki further along here which um, would blow it up, but that is another Koala removed. I just want to point out guys that part of, part of the agenda in this game was that we're going to sort of test warbands on terrain that's not so sparse. This t turned out to be a totally different experience though. Um, when I showed up and replicated the Australian table, it wasn't sparse, it's still a dense terrain, so warbands are still pretty good. But, my opponent is using a list which actually is legitimately good against warbands, he's using crazy koalas, and he's using missile launchers on long fire lanes. Um, the answer is not heavy infantry, infantry and suppression fire, that's not the way to deal with them. But uh, note in this game, we're having a really normal, decent game of infinity, we're using, we're using suppression fire in some cases, we're using um, smoke, we're using warbands, we're using impetuous, we're holding orders back, we're using crazy koalas, we're using teo camo, there's panoplies going, so it's a, it's a good, decent game of infinity. It's, it's not a game that's skewed towards warbands or against them. Um, so, I guess when we're saying that warbands are too powerful, this game is not exemplar, exemplary of that. And then we have, when we have people on the forum saying, oh, suppression fire is just the cure to warbands, is, you know, they're not a big deal. That's not the case either. I mean, the warbands are still doing work. So, this is really, um, you know, just a pretty standard game, really. It's a, it's a good game of infinity so far. Um, so next up, we have the Noctifier moving. The Noctifier was previously in this location, pulls back to here, and the plan is to pull back around and actually attack the Haramaki again, and uh, does not get discovered in the process. So pulling him around here, my opponent trying to put down a, a missile a template, so again, um, you can see the the, um, the Noct Noctifier's position is just pulling to the side of this, um, this crate, and then shooting out here and slicing onto the Haramaki, right? So what happens this time is the Noctifier, again successful, um, does manage to delete that um, that Haramaki. So what we're gonna have to try and do is not just kill that guy, but um, we've gotta deal with this guy as well who has a Blitzen, and the Blitzen um, is also able to get burst two arrow, but after losing the first one, he loses a plus three blister skill from the five-man link. So uh, let's have a look. Um, now the Noctifier, um, you can sort of see it there. Um, so there's the Noctifier in this position, um, this is a remaining member of the Haramaki Link team, and we get into a similar situation where I'm shooting at him, doing a, a one wound, and he's dropping back down to prone status again, so my opponent playing very well here, and he's got a, a list which is actually quite well suited to dealing with my list, and I, I really respect that, um, because he's able to fend me off without losing too many orders, which is really important. Right, let's move on. So now what I've decided to do is actually commit the Overdrawn. Because he's lost a member of the Link team, the Overdrawn will be shooting uh, at range 30, uh, plus three, minus three, 13 set and five dice. And my opponent now back down to Bliss Skill 13 with two dice, 13 set as well. So it's a risk, but we are still able to sort of um, have a crack at it. And the odds are in my favor, five dice against three, that when the Overdrawn moves around to this point, and actually shoots down this LOA, it can actually hit the other Haramaki, and that is exactly what it does. Win the roll, beat him off, he fails the armor save, he's got no doctors, and that's two members of the Haramaki link down. Cool, um, at the end of the turn the Pretor moves on to the Panoply, and this is the second pe uh, Pretor to pick up some stuff from the Panoply, and this time it gets Mimetism. So I'll take that. Mimetism probably more useful than an adhesive launcher in this case. Alrighty. 
Um, okay, so um, this is the end of the turn. We've got one of the Pretters um, pulled back here. So the Noctify went back into um, uh, Tio Camo after killing those guys. The Pretter is back behind here just to help defend. I'm worried about a bike coming down this alleyway. So the Pretter is there to use his chain rifle in this spot. And the tag is just pulled, at, pulled back so it's not actually uh, covering this lane of fire either. Now, um, I have also got uh, an R drone, so um, I've actually used the R drone to actually cover this line here. I'm really worried about your Jimbo coming around the corner and attacking this tag in close combat. So the R drone's there to actually try and at least um, give me at least one more arrow worth of um, flash pulse against their potential motorbike. What ends up happening though is Yojimbo pulls forward, um, the Preta goes for like a chain rifle, uh, Yojimbo tanks, it passes the armor save or the dodge or whatever and gets some smoke down. So here's where he's aiming the smoke just to block off the Preta so that the Preta doesn't get a line of sight past this building here because it's touching the, the wall and also can't get line of sight past this part of the smoke so the Preta is effectively blocked um, by this move. Now what he can do is he can actually move the Aragoda back around the corner and the plan is for him to actually zoom around here and try and, to pos try and possess the Overdrawn, right? So this is what's happening. The, 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 the uh, Aragoda comes around here. I'm going to move my camera. So here's the position of the tag. We can see it in the photograph. Here's the position of the bike. What the bike's doing is it's spinning its movement to go four inches to here and then four inches to back because it's got eight inches of move and it can of course hack me at any point in that movement. The zone of control is somewhere around this dotted line, right? So he's able to go for the total control. Now the tag has a deflector. He's got a, a 10 bot. So the Aragoto at Willpower 13 is reduced to 10 and the tag is Willpower 13. So it's 10 on one dice versus the 13. And if he gets that through, I've got two dice rolls to make with BTS 6 to try and beat a 16. So what happens is the bike moves in, fails the first check, does it a second time, fails the second check. Um, he's down to about four orders now, four or five orders. The third one is a crit. So this possesses the tag, which is quite fortunate for him, but with three attempts, the chances aren't that bad. So the tag's possessed at this point. What he does next is he moves the tag around over to here, and he's trying to gun me down by shooting. Um, he's splitting his burst. He's trying to pick off this guy, this guy, this guy, and there's another Datch right side in the photo. So he's actually splitting like two onto the R drone and three onto everybody else. And I think in that volley of shots gets one kill only. Everything else blocks him. Um, so not too much to achieve there. But the point is that he's able to continue moving the um, the Overdrawn down this alleyway and he's moving moving the Arago to hacker back. And this is quite clever because it means if I if I use my last remaining command token, which I've saved for this exact situation, if I move the Overdrawn again, he's going to have one more chance to hack me in his uh, turn, and that will be it. So it's quite a smart play. He's also moved Nico Oyama over here. He's got the tag and suppression fire still, hasn't even moved it, and your Jimbo's pulled back a little bit. There's still a crazy koala here. So he's actually done really well in this turn. He's got lucky to possess the tag so quickly, but um, you know he, he I think it was right to go for that move, and this gives him a really sh good shot at winning now. So my turn. We've now got the Preta, which um, has an Impetuous move, but if it, impe if it uses Impetuous, it's going to go straight into close combat with your Jimbo. So I decided to actually decided to restrain this one. What we're going to do instead is um, wait for the other Preta to move in, and unfortunately there's a, a tag and suppression fire here, so the tag just shoots right over and whacks me, right? So this Preta is gone immediately. So what we're actually doing here is we're moving the Preta in this position and now what we can do is use the chain rifle to actually hit this, right? So the chain rifle, the point of it is to do damage to Yojimbo to try and take him out, but more importantly we're trying to erase this bike because after the bike's cleared then my overdrawn can move out without getting possessed. And if that happens I've got like seven orders to use an HRMC to kill his tag, to kill Nico Oyama, and then I've got the game. So that's all I need to do to win. So the Predator moves out, your Jimbo goes for the engage and fails the roll. The Crazy Koala comes and hits the Predator, but the Predator survives the Crazy Koala. The bike 
fails the dodge check, it's got a, a negative penalty for being a bike, but passes the armor save, so we've got quite lucky there. So spending another order from group 2 on the Preta, doing exactly the same thing. Again, your Jimbo fails the dodge check. Again, the bike fails the dodge check, but passes the armor save a second time in the row. Uh, you, uh, 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 Nico Oyama is actually dodged out of the way now. The third time, the Preta um, gets engaged by your Jimbo, and the bike still survives by passing the dodge check. So I had several tracks at it, but didn't get lucky enough to kill the bike. Hope you guys can appreciate how much more likely it's, it is for me to actually do damage here if the, if the Aragoda hacker is dead, because that HRMC um, is going to go off against these guys. I mean, even if he's getting AROs, the chances are that the tag's going to do pretty well. So with the Preta gone, um, my next uh, attempt to try and um, win this game is to move the Noctifier out here. What I'm doing is I'm shooting at um, Nico and I'm shooting at the tag. If I can beat Nico off, I can try and move the tag back and, and avoid possession if I'm lucky. So the Noctifier is taking a free uh, flash pulse from this flash pulse spot here. Um, Nico Oyama could be the lieutenant and if I kill the lieutenant it's going to make his final turn really hard. Um, but I've got to go up against suppression fire from the tag. This is suppression. This is surprise attack though. So the tag, at minus three for range, minus six for TO camera, minus three for um, surprise shot, is needing something like twos to hit. But he does it anyway. Gets no hits and tanks the armor saves. Nico manages to dodge, and I completely miss him with the knock to fire. But then what happens in the in the next order is that the um, the Noctify moves around and fires it again, with pretty good odds, mind you, and the tag rolls two critical hits to kill the Noctifier. The Noctifier has Dogged, so he can keep on going after taking one crit, but two critical hits was just brutal. So losing the Noctifier, even after spending a few orders on it, achieving absolutely nothing, so that pretty much wrecks my turn. Um, finally, moving the Overdrawn back, um, Nico's trying to hit me with an EM grenade, the hacker isolates me instead of possessing me and actually gets the hit through, fail a BTS check, everything going wrong here so the Overdrawn is uh, isolated um, and shot up by these guys. The EM grenade doesn't get through though. Um, I used this particular order to fire five HRMC shots at Nico, didn't inflict a scratch on him, so five dice wasted against Nico, didn't kill him. Um, found out later that Nico is a lieutenant so I would have actually eliminated his lieutenant in that, <laughs> that order. Um, the Mark Rep <laughs> comes up. I'm running out of options, but the Mark Rep's still alive. Mark Rep moves in, tries to shoot the tag who's in suppression fire. Mark Rep dies against the suppression sh fire shots as well. So, pretty bleak um, outcome. You've also got the um, Preter in base contact co fighting against uh, Yujimbo. Not going to last long against Martial Arts Level 4. Um, and what else have we got? So in his turn, um, he's got Yujimbo, which tries to put down some smoke here and actually fails hilariously, so the smoke template, template doesn't actually go down. And then um, he's got four orders left. He can just move the tag forward. I, I can't um, I can't kill his his tag. What he does is he, he moves forward, uh, beats me in the face-to-face -face roll, and then his tag moves across. At that point, even if I engage... Um, He's using a second short skill to move to the objective. Um, even if I pass the engage roll, he place he places my model in base space with with his after he's finished the move. So there's nothing I can do to prevent his tag from actually ending on the objective and getting plus three points for having the tag there at the end of the game. Um, he's killed more stuff of mine than I have of his, so he gets two points. I've picked up more panoply, so I get two points, but the, the, the final objective is the tiebreaker. So after all is said and done, um, I actually think that just taking flat out second turn would have been better for just keeping the tag there. It's a much boring way to play, but you can just move it at the end of the game and, and win. Um, if I had used either the tag or the Noctifier or the Mark Rep to actually destroy his tag at the end, it would have been very hard for him to win that. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, the Preta didn't kill the Aragoto, the Noctifier got critted to death, the Overdrawn got possessed and isolated, so with dice rolls going against me, I couldn't pull this one out. Um, this game wasn't really a game of warbands, but the warbands did sort of what I needed them to. I had a list which was designed to soften them up with the heavy weapons and then finish them off with the warbands, but um, even though the, um, the, the heavy weapons did well to beat off the Haramaki. Haramaki were quite a good to counter that particular strategy. 
Um, but overall, I think my opponent played really well. I played really well, and the dice had an effect on the game, but it was a really good close game, and I was really happy with the, the table layout, so I'm quite keen to play some more games with this particular layout. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's been a really fun battle report. I'm going to have some more for you guys soon, and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought.